Brendan Connell is an American writer and translator. He was born in 1917 Santa Fe. His first novels were Dr. Black and Nigarilia and the translation of Father Torturo from 2005. Today we will review his 2011 collection, The Life of Polycrates and Other Stories for Antiquated Children. The Life of Polycrates concerns Polycrates, the tyrant of the Isle of Samos in the 6th century BC. When the young Polycrates returns to Samos from his travels, he finds his father Aeces, the previous tyrant, murdered and replaced by an oligarchy, conspiring with his brothers. He paints slanderous poems targeting the rich of the island all over town, and later they seize the island for themselves, and then divide it into three parts. The deeds of Polycrates and his correspondence with other notables of his time are then noted until the Spartan invasion of Samos. But it is not the Spartans Polycrates should worry about, but Oruetes, the satrap of Sardis, who proves fatal, as he has his intestines ripped out and burned in front of his eyes, then prostitutes his daughter, and has both of their bones pounded in a mortar, and sent after the meals to make the people of Samos eat them. The story is interrupted at times with insertions of letters, songs, and other material, which help to make it more interesting. Sadly, this is one of only three good stories here solely written by Connell. Collapsing Claude is a man fall for a disgusting woman, who lives with another lover as well, and the whole thing is just well disgusting. The brother of the Holy Ghost is an amusing rundown of the election and five-month-long papacy of Benedictine monk Pietro da Morone, as Celestine V, who did little and at first tried to escape rather than assume the dignity. Maledict Michele has a woman marry a strange German who loves to suck her feet and who derives strength from making her hate him. It is really not as good as it may sound. The life of Captain Gareth Carnivan concerns the same, a big game hunter who loved killing insects and married an older woman for money, who shot 1,214 stags, 11 beavers and a gibbon, and one wife when trying to imitate William Tell. He becomes utterly hated by animals all over the world due to how many of them he shot, and when he dies he becomes a demon, eating his own friends if they happen to wind up in hell. Molten Rage was a rather tedious affair, concerning a belligerent man who says he is God, and who ends in the gutter after his violent outburst, ignored by his weekend socialist friend. The chemical wedding of Des Essaintes is a rather unpleasant, confused affair, despite the promising name. The Search for Savino, written with Forrester Gaia, author of Swans Over the Moon, is the second best story of the collection. It concerns a man's search for the work of Enzio Savino, an obscure 19th century painter who made his art on people's skin, and which would only appear if the skin was treated with vinegar and salt, even after a hundred years. The fictional biography of Savino at the end reminds one of Marcel Schwab's imaginary lives. The Slug is a disgusting story of a man trying to lose his friends and become as disgusting as possible. Peter Payne concerns a daredevil who hated how fat his wife got, as well as her tendency to gamble and feed her family on mystery meat to save money for the casino. The contemporary stories are all rather boring, and just try to shock one as much as possible. The story is going on about gross things more than anything. The historical stories are the best, though the scatterbrained storytelling, where the stories are interrupted by random different things vaguely related to the plot, like fragments of letters, do get a bit annoying a few stories in. 